What's up everyone, OJ here. Welcome back to another jam-packed RPG and Nintendo Switch news video. We've got a ton of stuff to talk about. A big milestone for the Nintendo Switch passing up one of the most legendary systems of all time and so much more. But before we get into anything, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, click that notification bell, and check out our videos every single day, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time right here on Player Essence. We've got a lot of great content coming up this week on the channel. Channel, especially with Pokemon Legends Arceus coming out. We got a giveaway for you guys. More stuff link in the description. So you're going to want to be right here. But let's go ahead and start off with some pretty big news because the Nintendo Switch has done something that many felt. I would say 99% of people felt that there was no way that the Nintendo Switch was going to be able to do this. And that is the Nintendo Switch has outsold the PlayStation 1 unofficially. Now, we will get the official numbers for how Nintendo did up to the end of December in February. So we should be getting that pretty soon here in the next week or so. We'll be getting those numbers from Nintendo, but VG Charts, which is unofficial, but they have a pretty good track record of tracking right around the sales of where systems are because they use just the general numbers that are being shipped out there from their estimates and also what the companies state themselves as well and the rate of sales. So let's go ahead and get into this here. William D'Angelo has the beat on it. The Nintendo Switch has outsold the lifetime sales of the PlayStation, aka PS1 or PSX, according to the chart estimates the nintendo switch sold another 341,662 units for the week ending january 15th to bring its lifetime sales to 102.81 million units this compares to the playstation with the sales of 102.5 million units lifetime the figure for the switch includes the combined sales of the original switch model the switch Lite, and the nintendo switch oled nintendo's hybrid console has now become the fifth best selling video game platform of all time next up is the playstation 4 which has sold an estimated 116.58 million units to date then the Game Boy plus the Game Boy Color at 118.69 million units. Now the Nintendo Switch is 13.77 million units away from the PlayStation 4 and 15.88 million units away from the Game Boy. Now if you break down the sales of the Nintendo Switch, it has sold 34.67 million units in the US, 27.22 million units in Europe, and 23.43 million units in Japan. Breaking down the sales in Europe even further, it has sold 5.21 million units in the UK, 6.11 million units in France, and 5.93 million units in Germany. Now, shipment figures for the Nintendo Switch reached 92.87 million units as of September 30th, 2021, which Nintendo did report. And Nintendo also stated that 681 million units of Switch games have been shipped lifetime. And of course, the top 10 is big. You got games that have sold 30 million, 20 million in the teens as well. But I do want to talk about this because this is very interesting with this. The Switch is probably going to leapfrog two other systems before it's even hit its sixth year on the market. That is absolutely incredible. And nobody would have ever thought that the PlayStation 4 would be beat by the Nintendo Switch in less than six years because right now we're about to hit the fifth year complete fifth year anniversary of the switch that launched in 2017 we're going to 2022 so if you look at what they stated here the switch is about 13.77 million units away from the playstation 4 well the switch has been selling around 20 something million units each year so 13 million units won't be too hard to get to nintendo moves around 10 million units at the last three months of the year anyway so we know that they're going to hit the playstation 4 15.88 million units away from the game boy they should theoretically hit that by the end of the year as well so it's going to go from fifth all the way to third in this number of months from not at this point to the end of the year which is just incredible especially if they have the legend of zelda breath of the wild 2 out but even if they didn't have that game out people are still buying the system for all the previous games i think games like pokemon legends arceus which we're going to talk about here in just a bit that's going to be a huge system seller and driver for the rest of the year games like kirby are going to help games like triangle strategy are going to help games like bayonetta 3 are going to help mario plus rabbit sparks of hope if that drops this year as 
as well. So there's a lot of supplemental stuff along with the Evergreen games, the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, the Splatoon 2, the Splatoon 3 that's going to be coming out. So there's just so much stuff. There's so much momentum. And once again, it is a revolution within how people play games. The fact that you can have your own screen, you can take it anywhere that you want, and it also doubles as the home console as a true hybrid is just something that none of the big three have done to this capacity, and it worked out well for them, and that is the gimmick going forward, at least for right now at this point, till it doesn't work anymore. So this is big. This is big because nobody thought the Nintendo Switch could do this, and it's doing it, and it's doing it faster than any other system in the history of systems out there. The Switch has a legitimate shot to catch, the PlayStation 2 and it has a shot to catch the Nintendo DS. Now it's going to take another good year and a half or two years or so of solid sales but by the end of this year the Nintendo Switch should be at around 120 million or so I'd say right around that number 119 120 million so that means it would need about 30 million plus more right for the rest of it so it'd have to have another good year then into the following year so I think it's possible especially if you look at it the fact that it's selling so quick at this point and also when the next switch comes out the previous switch is still going to sell you're still going to have switch lights you're still going to have those systems and those are going to go on fire sale so i think that it is going to become the best selling system of all time when it's all said and done after all the dust has settled i think that it will be just because nintendo's going to want to push that even past when the switch 2 comes out so i think that it will but those are my thoughts on it what do you guys think about this pretty crazy accomplishment that the switch has done let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the next topic here. We've got a final trailer for Pokemon Legends Arceus that shows some silhouettes for some possible new versions, not even possible, new versions of the final evolutions, which is really cool. So they don't show it, and this is no spoiler. This is not a leak. This is not somebody who's played the game early or anything like that. This is what the Pokemon company showed where they say Hisuian Final Starter Evolutions Pokemon Legends Arceus, let's freaking go. The Pokemon Company, Game Freak, the final trailer. The game is dropping on January 28th. And to answer so many questions out there, yes, I will be streaming the game. Yes, I'm super hyped for the game. Yes, I think that this is going to be the series that moves Pokemon going forward. They're going to have two separate things. They're going to have the regular Pokemon line of games, how we have the two different versions, the Sword and Shield, the Red and Blue, all of that type of stuff. We're going to have that, and I think that that is going to take some elements from Pokemon Legends. I have not been looking at all of them. There's just been some things, quality of life stuff, that I've really enjoyed what they've done with this game, and even what the Pokemon Company has showed in their overview trailers and everything that they're going to take some of that stuff and put it into the regular mainline pokemon games and then advance those elements for pokemon legends in my opinion there's no reason after pokemon legends drops there's no reason for the chibi remakes anymore there's no need to go back and chibi remake those type of games which that came out beforehand you didn't know how legends and people were going to respond to that so i understand getting a different company to do that and obviously you make more money doing that but in my opinion there's no reason to do those anymore and what you need to do is just go forward with the regular pokemon games and the pokemon legends games and taking those games and remaking those regions and going back in time but i do think that there is somewhat of a need for the chibi games because you get faithful remakes with the multiplayer intact so i think that some people want to see more of those but i think that maybe games like let's go there's no need for stuff like that i think that going forward with the regular pokemon games the generations with the two different copies also going forward with legends and also maybe the chibi remakes for some of those that's what you can do but we will see there are rumors of pokemon let's go johto and all of that so we'll see if they stick to that but to me I think that Legends is where it's at. They need to evolve this franchise. Once it's out, they need to start working. Obviously, they have the next generation of Pokemon that they're working on. But then after that, go back to Legends because this game is going to be incredible. Based on what I've seen so far, I am super sold. I'm going to be streaming the game. I love this final trailer. I love how that they mixed up. They schmixed up some of the final evolutions and what they're doing here so i'm very much happy with this game yes there's stuff to be improved don't get me wrong obviously the graphics that can be stuff that people have talked about in terms of improvement i think that they need to do that i think that there's probably other things that can add in to make the experience better as well obviously stuff like presentation wise the voice acting but man this is a very good start and i am excited to stream the game for you guys and play it this 
Thursday or Friday. I know that I can get the game, I think, in Australia. They do the game a bit earlier since they're like ahead of time, like a lot more ahead of time than like the rest of the world, or at least where I'm at. So I'm probably going to do that. And then, of course, I'm going to be doing my giveaway, which there's a link in the description for you guys. And I will be streaming the game normally as well. So I'm just going to be constantly streaming the game and having fun playing it. So make sure you follow me on Twitch, Player Essence on there. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're someone new. And of course, enable those notifications as well for Pokemon Legends goodness, because we're going to be 100%ing this baby like crazy. So what do you guys think about Pokemon Legends Arcus that's coming out this week? Are you picking it up? I have a poll on the channel. You can go vote on the community poll as well. Let me know in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the next topic here, guys. We've got a big demo for a highly anticipated Japanese RPG, Monarch, for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Nintendo Switch. The demo is available in Europe and North America. This is very exciting here because people have been looking forward to this because this game is made by former SMT developers and other really good RPGs as well. So NIS America has released a playable demo for Monarch, PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, North America, Europe. Go out there and download it right now. So Monarch first launched for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Nintendo Switch back in October 14th, 2021 in Japan and Asia and is due out for the PS4, PS5, and Switch, plus also PC, via Steam on February 22nd in North America and February 25th in Europe. Now, February is just a rough month for rpgs i mean there are so many good ones right we have horizon forbidden west we have elden ring and now we also have monarch plus more games as well dying light 2 that's coming out in february there are a lot of good games coming out but i think that monarch based on this demo trailer here based on the gameplay i think that this is a pretty solid game people have been saying some good stuff about monarch on the Switch, PS4, PS5. I'm gonna download the PS5 demo tonight and check it out. I'll probably have a video for you guys. And I'm also gonna play it on Switch. Maybe do some comparisons and talk about it from there. But overall, the game is looking really solid. And I'm excited for it. I'm gonna definitely play Monarch at some point just because there's so much stuff coming with Horizon Forbidden West and all of that. I wanna really play that game. But it seems like that comes out a little bit beforehand. So I won't be done with it, but I'll still check out Monarch even when it launches. Like I'll probably have a review code for it. So I'll check it out for sure. But this demo trailer is looking pretty good. So what are your thoughts on Monarch and the demo? If you've checked out, if you've played it, let me know in the comment section below. All right, and moving into the next topic here, we've got some more action RPG goodness for you because Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin, the basics of battle trailer and also a new final trailer is out, but I will be honest here, guys, that final trailer was bad in my opinion because it's just a convoluted story where they mismatched all sorts of stuff, not trying to spoil the game for you, and it didn't make any sense, which a lot of these final trailers don't make sense if you don't know what's going on and everything, and I completely get that, but I don't think the final trailer sold the game. So I don't care about the final trailer because I'm gonna play this game just because I like Final Fantasy, I like action RPGs, and the game looks fun based off of the basics of battle trailer. You gotta look at the job abilities, the skills, the progression. This is what this game needs. This is a Neo style Final Fantasy game made by the team ninja dudes and everything like that. And it's about the gameplay. Yes, you have the story. Yes, it's setting up the original Final Fantasy. Yes, I get all that. And maybe the story is incredible. Maybe it's going to be a really good story based game. But from what I see, I see content. I see gameplay. I see action that's what i see and that's what this game is about and that's what i felt that neo and ninja gaiden and all these games that team ninja make the strong suit is the gameplay and the combat not the story stuff so i wasn't impressed with the story but i'm very impressed with the combat in the game because it looks really refined and polished from the original demo that came out so publisher square x developer team ninja have released a new trailer for stranger of paradise final fantasy origin introducing the basics of battle if you missed it you can check out the final trailer, like I said, as well. Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin is due out for the PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, Xbox One, and also PC via Epic Game Store on March 18th. And of course, there's plenty of content to check out on the game when it comes to the gameplay and the demo and everything that's been going on. And yes, you can talk about the graphics of the game. It's not up to where the PS5 is capable or the Xbox Series is capable. It's clearly a ps4 game and even kind of looks like one of those like mid-level ps4 games at times but that's so the gameplay can be incredibly smooth like the frame rate looks really good it looks like it holds up there's a lot of enemies on screen there's a lot of stuff and special effects going on you want to make sure that this game plays completely 
perfect because of how much action is happening and all the effects with multiple characters on screen by the way it's not like you have just one character on screen and that one character is doing everything you've got a bunch of characters on screen so to me it makes sense that they're really prioritizing the frame rate and the prioritizing the gameplay more so than anything and making sure that it can run across all the different platforms from the xbox one all the way to the PlayStation 5. So I get it for those that are kind of upset about the graphics, but gameplay wise, it looks like it's a crazy Neo based Final Fantasy game. So that's definitely a good thing. Two thumbs up on that. So what are your thoughts on Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin and the gameplay in there, the basics of battle and what you can do are you going to kill chaos? Are you going to look for chaos? Are the memes ready? for what we have in store, or for what Square Enix has in store. Are we ready for those memes that are going to come? Because you know this game is going to deliver all sorts of weird dialogue that you're just like, okay, sure. And it turns into a meme online, because you know it's just going to happen. And like the Square Enix PR team is taking advantage of that. They've been making chaos jokes and all of that. So we'll see what happens with this. What are your thoughts on it? Let me know in the comments section below. All right, and moving on to the final topic here, guys. Aztec forgotten gods remember this game from the nintendo indie world presentation it's got a release date after originally getting delayed it's got a release date and it looks pretty good it's coming to multiple platforms this is a cyber stone action adventure game very interesting so aztec forgotten gods will launch for the playstation 4 playstation 5 xbox series xbox one switch pc via steam and also the Epic Game Store on March 10th, developer is it Lienzo announced it will support English, Spanish, French, Italian, German, and Russian language options. Now, here's a little bit more about this game because it does look pretty good. So Aztec Forgotten Gods is the Cyberstone action adventure following, I can't say the name of her name, a young woman who battles colossal forgotten gods to uncover the truth behind her far future Mesoamerican metropolis. She'll have to turn the gods power against them as she soars through the city with power and grace using ancient artifact, remnant of the time long forgotten. Here are the key features in the game. Exhilarating verticality and mobility. Launch yourself into action with mysterious technology that will allow you to uncover ancient secrets in a city ripe with exploration. A unique futuristic Mesmo-American setting, explore the modern Aztec city that has thrived for centuries as a stone metropolis, technologically advanced yet heavily rooted in ancient tradition. Massive bosses. Who doesn't love massive bosses? Face off in electrifying battles against gigantic creatures resembling deities from the Aztec pantheon. Deeply involved narrative. Join the girl, the main character, in an emotional journey filled with twists, turns, and high-octane action as she fights to protect her city from the forgotten gods. Refreshing perspective of the Aztec mythology. Dive into the fascinating Mesoamerican-inspired world and see Aztec lore like you've never seen it before. You guys know I am a huge history buff, so I love history stuff. I love looking at it, and I love the Aztec and all that stuff. And this game looks really nice. It looks really nice. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Some of the animations might be a little bit funky in some of the cutscenes, but overall, it looks like it's going to be a really cool game so i'm looking forward to seeing exactly how the gameplay plays out and everything with it i was impressed with it at the indie world presentation so i think it should be a solid independent title when it launches on march 10th so what are your thoughts when it comes to everything that we discussed here from the nintendo switch passing up the ps1 unofficially at this point pokemon Legends arceus and the final gameplay trailer is it hyping you up to play monarch stranger of paradise final fantasy there's a lot of great rpg content a lot of cool switch stuff as well what do you guys think about all this let me know in the comment section below all right guys that wraps it up for this one here thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new click that notification bell and we will see you for the next video peace